Hey guys, it's Kelly with Clementine's Letter, chapter 11. It's our last chapter. Um, so glad you're back. Um, it's been like a week, so I'm really sorry. It's been like a busy week here. Um, but I'm so excited to reach you. Um, it's Friday. It's raining at my house. What's it doing where you are? Is it raining? It's raining a lot around a lot of the country, but where you are, it might be sunny or warm. It's a little chilly and rainy here. Um, but I'm really excited to read to you. It's the best chapter ever. We're going to finish up the book. And if you like my channel, just hit subscribe. Because then it shows YouTube that you like me and I get to keep reading to you. Which is my favorite thing to do in the whole world. And I hope you like it. Because I really want you to like it too. Okay. Alright. Here we go. Chapter 11. Clementine's Letter. On Friday morning, I woke up a little bit excited. Today was the last day I'd have to put up with Mrs. Nagel. I felt a little worried too, as if something bad was about to ha happen, but I didn't know what it was. I found out at school. We'll leave for the state house after lunch, Mrs. Nagel announced. She picked up a notice. It says the ceremony starts with the letter reading at one o'clock. Um, what do you mean letter reading? I said out loud. I don't know, she answered. Letter reading winner announcement speech. That's all it says, which gave me a heart attack. All morning, I just sat there with my chest squeezing me so hard that I was frozen in my seat. I was so quiet, I didn't, I didn't even have to hear a single, Clementine, you need to pay attention, which was a new record for me. That is the good news about heart attacks, I suppose. And then it was time to go. While everyone was getting jackets and backpacks, I just stood in the corner. Are you all right, Clementine, said Miss Nagel. I, I think I'm having a heart attack, I told her. I really think I should go home. She squinted at me for a minute. I doubt that's it. You're probably just excited about visiting the state house. So I had to walk out with Mrs. Nagel, and when I took a seat on the bus, she sat down beside me. I'm glad we have this chance to talk, she said when the bus started up. I'm afraid you and I didn't have a very successful week. I decided that since I was probably going to die soon, I might as well tell her the truth. I couldn't guess any of your rules, I told her. What do you mean? Here's a quick picture of Miss Nagel and Clementine. All right, so I just told her, I, um, I can't guess any of your rules. What do you mean? I took a di di big breath. <sighs> Your rules are different from my teachers. It took me a long time to learn those, but I did. So when I saw those apple slices on Monday, I remembered our feed the hamsters first rule, but I didn't guess your don't touch it because it's a science experiment rule. When you put that math problem on the board yesterday, I remembered our magic zero placeholder rule, but I didn't guess about your don't say the answer out loud rule. Um, and when you handed out the paper the first day, I remembered our put your name in the upper right-hand corner rule, but I didn't guess about your don't make a mark on it rule. I took another deep breath. <gasps> I like to know the rules. And I like to know rules about things first before I can make a mistake. Oh, said Miss Nagel. And she was quiet for a minute. Then she said, that makes sense. I wish we talked about this on Monday. Me too, I said, but I didn't know what the problem was on Monday. And then, I sh and then I showed her my arm for a reminder. Mrs. Nagel studied my arm for a while, and then she took out a pen and wrote the same thing down on her arm too. I'm not even kidding about that. Sometimes you have to figure out the problem before you can figure out the solution. Thank you for the good advice, she said. I just stared at her arm for a minute. Then I remembered my manners. Uh, you're welcome. And how about this, she said. If your teacher wins a trip, I'll be here for the rest of the year. So on Monday morning, would you tell me about your classroom rules? Because I don't know any of them. I said, sure. Even though I knew that my teacher was going to win that trip. I knew that my teacher was not going to win that trip. He wasn't going to win the trip. She thinks he's going to be back, right? What do you guys think? I don't know. Think about, thinking about that made my heart attack even worse. 
By the time we got to the state house, I was practically dead from it. The two other classes were already in the lobby. One was a group of high schoolers standing around, butting each other with their shoulders. The other was a kindergarten class. They were butting each other with their shoulders too, but they weren't standing around because, because most of them had been knocked on the floor. Before our class could get along, get going with the shoulder butting, it was time to go into the auditorium. First, the high schoolers filed down and sat on the right-hand side. Next went the kindergartners, and then they went over to the left. The sitting down part, though, didn't go very well for them. They were so little that any time they sat back, the seats sprang up and closed, snapping at them like alligators in a frog pond. Here's a picture of that. Have you ever sat in a seat in an auditorium? It's too small, and you fall through, and then it snaps on you. Um, it's no fun when that happens. Um, things got a little crazy for a while. And then with 19 little kids collapsing into the seats and screaming, they were like being gob like they were being gobbled up, which they might have been. Um, good grief, I heard Mrs. Whis Mrs. Rice whisper to Miss Nagel. Let's hope our kids are heavy enough. Otherwise, the PTA is going to have a canary. Finally, someone got 19 law books and weighed down the kindergartner's laps with them. Then our class went in and we sat right in the middle, in front of us at a long table with a sign that said judging committee were four people. One of them wore a badge and a serious face, which meant he was the boss. Behind them sat um, three teachers vying for the award. I kept my eyes turned away so I wouldn't have to see Mr. DeMatz. The boss judge stood up. We'll hear, we will hear one student letter about each teacher, he said. Then we will announce our final decisions. The kindergarten teacher went first. She um, beckoned to a tiny girl who was missing all of her front teeth. She looked a relief to be away from her snapping she seat, probably because she couldn't bite back. Since kindergartners are too young to write letters, she just told the judges why her teacher should be the winner. My teacher is the best one, she started. After that, I had no idea what she was saying. Um, and I don't think the judges did either, although they kept smiling and nodding. Next was a high school teacher's turn. A boy with purple hair spikes got up. A fake yawn oh, to show he wasn't nervous about reading his letter. I didn't understand much about what he said either, even though he had all of his teeth. There's some stuff about achievement tests and some stuff about academic atmosphere and some words even bigger than that. I was pretty sure he was making them all up. The judges smiled and nodded through his letters too. Then Mr. Dramat stood up. The judges handed him a big envelope and he pulled out a sheet of paper from it. Clementine, would you please come up and read your letter? From my seat, I shook my head, no, no, and I arrow-eyed him. He nodded, uh, yes, and he arrowed, eye, arrowed eyed me harder. I looked back at him even harder. I didn't use stingray eyes, of course, but it wouldn't have mattered because then he looked back at me with his best trick, laser eyes. He looked at me with laser eyes. Laser eyes are the most powerful eyes of all. They hypnotize me to stand up and walk over to the podium. Mr. DeMatz handed me my letter and I took it and I started to read. I have to tell you some things about my teacher. If you go camping with him and you, ha and you have to have beans, and then I sneaked a look at him, my teacher. Here's Clementine sneaking a look as she was about to read her letter. See Mr. DeMatz and Clementine's at the podium? Because I really wanted to see him one last time before he hated me for the rest of his life when I read my letter. And when I found his face, it was shining with a happy smile that said, I'm going to Egypt and Clementine is helping me. The paper fell out of my hands. The judge boss picked it up and held it out to me. I pushed it away and I shook my head. It's okay, I told him. I don't need it. I know what I want to tell you about my teacher. And then I started over, but not with the things I had written on Monday. If you go camping with him and you have to have beans, you will be lucky because even if you've never made them, it will be okay. My teacher would never say, how come you don't know how to make beans? 
I taught you how to do that last week. No, he would say something like this. Say, I see you're planning to make some beans and I know you'll be successful at that because you're good at so many things. You'll probably start by opening the can and then you'll get a clean pot. And without even knowing it, he will teach you how to make beans. And here's the tricky part. Somehow you will think you learned it all by yourself. Plus, you'll think making beans is the most interesting, fun thing in the whole world to do because my teacher makes everything interesting and fun. Even things that other might, people might think are weird. And every morning when you go to school, I mean, when you go camping with him, you'll be excited to see what he's got planned for that day. And when it's time to go home, you'll be a little bit sorry because you had a really good time. But you'll know that's okay but see, because he's got lots of excellent projects planned and he'll be there the next day. And I felt a hand on my shoulder and I looked up. Mrs. Rice nodded down to me. Thank you, Clementine, she said, as if I was all finished. Um, but there's more, I said. I want to tell them more. I know, she said, but that's enough for now. And then she led me back to my seat, which was good, because my heart attack had gotten to my eyes and made my eyes a little bit blurry. The judges got up and walked over to my teacher. They smiled, they shook his hand, then they walked over to the other teachers and smiled and shook their hands too. Then the four judges came back to their table and the boss one picked up the microphone. The winner of this year's Great Adventure for Teachers program is, and right then I knew they were going to say my teacher's name because of what I said about him, which made me feel really, really, really sad and weirdly really, really happy too, which must have confused my ears because what I heard was Miss Gladys Huffman. The kindergarten teacher must have heard that too because she walked to the podium with a huge, I can't believe it's me grin on her face. The kindergartners jumped up and started clapping like crazy. This was such, this was not a good idea because the law books all fell to the floor and the seats started snapping them up again. Oh, thank you very much. I couldn't have done it without all my wonderful students, Miss Gladys Huffman said in a hurry to the microphone. And now I think I better go rescue them. And that was the end of the program. My teacher came over to our class and knelt down in front of me. Thank you so much for that outstanding letter of recommendation, Clementine. But you didn't win, I said. I'm sorry about that, which suddenly I actually was. Okay, fine, sort of. Um, don't be, he said, I'm not. You're not? I'm not, he repeated, here's him. Talking to Clementine, Mr. Nemats and Clementine. So he said, I'm not. I really did want to win, but then when I read your letter, I thought, I've really missed my students this week. Everything you said in your letter reminded me of how much I liked teaching you. We started a lot of projects and I don't want to leave in the middle of them. I plan to be your teacher this year and I don't want to miss out. You were right about all of that. So if I'd, I'd won, I would have wanted to tell them I was sorry, but I wouldn't accept the prize. He nodded over to the kindergarten teacher. I'm glad they gave it to her. I figure an archeological dig will feel like a vacation for her. Ay, he nodded over, he, he, he was happy for her. I tapped my nose and I pointed to him and I said, you got that right on the nose, good thinking. And he smiled at me. I'm very proud of you today, Clementine. Suddenly, I wanted to know the truth. You shouldn't be, I wanted him to know the truth. I said, you shouldn't be proud of me. Um, you don't really know what was in that letter. Yes, I do, he said. I read them all this morning. Oh no, you couldn't have read my letter, I told him. Mr. Demetz raised his eyebrows at me. The smell of my socks could peel the wrapping off a mummy. If he walked by, the great sink, sphinx would keel over. Then how come, how did you know I would? Do you remember the, the um, story about the mother bird? I didn't make the here we go again face right then because I wanted to hear that story, but Mr. Ma DeMatch didn't tell it. Instead, he shook my hand and said, I knew you could fly Clementine and I knew that you would fly. And I sat there shaking my teacher's hand. My heart attack went away and you will not believe what happened next. I felt a prickling all over my skin. 
And you know what that was? Feathers. Okay, fine. It was goosebumps. Oh my goodness. Was that an incredible story? And her teacher knew she could fly and that she would do the right thing. Um, it kind of brought tears to my eyes too. What about you guys? So sweet and what a great teacher. Um, reminds me of my kindergarten kids that I'm teaching this year. Um, they're the best. They really are. Probably as good as you kids. I bet your teacher says that about you. Okay, so bye. Have a great weekend. Hit subscribe. Um, I don't know. And I guess like as well. And um, I can't wait to read you more books. Okay? Um, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye.